Yeah, that's what I was working. Which is the back? There's the back. That's back, man. And then the okay. Okay. Man, a man little, technology. Bottom button here is a laser pointer. If you want to show something. Yeah, I could point. Boy, we're set, man. What? All this power. We did my thing of this. <laughs> Imagine. Instead of doing an overhead, overhead presentation, you know, flipping pages. Mm -hmm. I remember doing those things where I used to put them in a, in a roll and kind of roll them over. Mm -hmm. you know, because page and page and page and the, and the, the they get sticky. I mean, you, you know, it was a mess. I think we should probably get started. Okay, let's get started. Oh, one second. Yeah, I gotta make sure it's done. The what? Screen up. Technical connections here. You know, it's just technical. I don't deal with technical stuff. I'm totally non-technical. <laughs> I'm a faculty in the Department of Landscape Architecture. I'm the official timekeeper slash moderator for this session. Um, I want to introduce Herman Cruz, who is a colleague of mine in the department. Um, and he will be talking about new morphologies for old cities, the case for eco-urbanism in Cali, Colombia. Isn't that a great title? <laughs> uh, three years ago, I went to my um, hometown, Cali, Colombia. Uh, to visit my aunt who was turning 80. And my brother, who is a medical doctor, got very excited and figured he connect me with what was happening in the city. So he connected with the uh, director of planning. And I got to Cali for a one week vacation, eating some of the old food, chatting with my aunt, looking at the old neighborhood. Ended up being Trust throughout the city, uh, looking at development, a growth. I know you're happy this has happened. And I'm looking at a city that I left there 40 some years ago. I uh, grew up playing soccer in the street, swam in seven rivers that were around the city, went to the mountains to, to hunt and to get berries and all kinds of things. And I couldn't cross the street at the corner of my house. It's an old colonial house built in the 16 something has a plaque on it. Uh, and I said, this is crazy. You know, the little street that was in the corner of the other house, now it's a four lane highway. Well, that's okay because you could go three blocks down and there's a bridge that will take you across. Go like, oh great, so you go and take the bridge, go over, and you are in the middle of nowhere trying to figure out where to go. So the director of planning says, Dr. Cruz, because everybody's a doctor. Do you mind talking to our staff? And I say, sure, why not? So I figure I just go there and shoot the bull with the guys for a little bit. They have announced this stuff. There were people there. Became a lecture. I go like, wait a minute, I'm not going to pay for this. Uh, <clears throat> but out of that came a new interest in figuring out how do we get to this point. I grew up in a city of 150 to 200,000 people in the old section of the city. My mother was a former beauty queen. Uh, one of my cousins was Miss Colombia. That's one I get my looks from. Uh, and uh, we play everywhere. And now my brother lives in the southern part of the city. It takes one hour to get there by car, about three hours by bus. <laughs> And it's crazy. So I just had to do an initial assessment to this thing. I got myself involved in a project that is bigger than the one I can do. Things have changed since I was there. The previous mayor got indicted for trying to give contracts to his friends. Imagine that. And, uh, so he was deposed. A new mayor now is in trying to give contracts to his friends. There's a new director of planning. You know, so there's a lot of crazy things going on. Cali is known more for than anything for uh, drug traffic. You know, my good brothers, the Arajuela brothers, with whom I went to elementary school, uh, made a mess out of the town because there was a time in Cali where the currency was dollars. There was so much money going around, people were used to that. And now the government has pushed these people out, the guerrillas are on the defensive, uh, and things are not so good for those who want a free ticket. So 
I uh, was surprised about that because you have these memories in, in your mind. There's a tango that talks about returning to your past, you remember me. And it's a very romantic kind of thing. So I decided to do several things. First, collect data. That's a good thing to do. So I went to the planning and they said, I need your GIS files for Cedar Cali. No sweat. So I have this 4 meg memory stick. It says, wow, you got a 4 meg memory stick. It says, yeah, I'm American. Uh, and uh, so they, they loaded me with all the information on the city. Uh, begin to connect with people of leadership that were former classmates, people that knew my father. Uh, begin to get my urban design class involved in it, kind of thinking about big things. Uh, and began to write about Cali in different environments. So a friend from, of mine from uh, uh, Brazil invited me to the seventh conference of the Society for Urban Form. It's an international society that they meet at great places. We went to Uro Preto in Brazil, which is north of Rio. It's uh, one of those uh, heritage humanity uh, communities. It's the same way it was in 1700s. Uh, very steep streets. No, not very good for handicapped people. Uh, old cobblestones. And we met there for five days, and I had a great time. Uh, so I'm telling you about Santiago de Cali. That's the true name of the city, Santiago de Cali. Uh, St. James of Cali. Uh, and I began to talk to my students. I began to uh, deal with the city. Uh, Cali is uh, in a valley. This is the valley of the Cauca River. It comes all the way from almost the border with Ecuador and goes north almost to the Atlantic, uh, merging with the Magdalena River, which is the main north south river. Uh, Colombia has a lot of north south rivers on the west part of the, of the, of the country and east-west rivers, west-east rivers. On the other side, I go to the Amazon, or to the Renoco Basin, and then go to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, Cali was a small commercial center. Uh, it has uh, seven tall peaks, they call them farallones, top, uh, tall, steep slopes. Uh, uh, the rivers were great for water supply. I uh, began to look at the growth of the city, I begin to see a critical period here where the density and the size of the city in hectares begins to get larger, gets a critical point here. So the, when you look at the density, you say, well, it's not much. You know, it's 200 people per hectare. How big is a hectare? You know, 2.35 acres. So it's, it's a lot of room, but it's mostly vertical. Okay. Uh, you have several major factors that affect the city. Uh, I couldn't go to Cali uh, way back because I was seen as a rich person that was good for kidnapping. And I didn't want to spend my, my life in the jungle eating grubs. So uh, I just didn't do it. So I, I was absent for 20 some years. Uh, my aunt didn't want me to come, and, um, but I, I went there. now it's very pacified. Now it's changed a lot. But the guerrilla and counter-guerrilla activity, you have in Colombia, you have the guerrillas, and you have the guys who fight against the guerrillas, and then you have the government's army fighting both. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a lot of drug, a lot of drug production. Uh, I started with, uh, with marijuana, and they used to send bales of marijuana. As a matter of fact, the other day they confiscated 1,200 pounds of marijuana at the airport. Somebody want to take something. <laughs> and uh, about two weeks ago, they confiscated five tons of cocaine, enough to give everybody in Muncie a good buzz. <laughs> uh, so there was easy reaches on it. It affected a lot of things. As a matter of fact, it affected the local soccer teams, because one of the soccer teams was owned by one of the drug lords. And that team now is on the Clinton list, and they cannot buy dollars to buy players. So they're in a, in a big bind, because it messed them up a lot. There's a lot of urban unemployment because the drug cartels fail, and now people have to do a decent job. Uh, they have a lot of new cities where people come to the city for refuge, but they bring no skills. So not bringing skills, they are at the mercy of other things. It's a highly political environment, so the poor become the patronized by political parties and those kind of things. 
uh, there's all pandering, um, empowerment of migrants, uh, a lot of invasion of, um, of private properties for the purpose of doing squatter settlements. You know, my, my parents had a farm north of Cali, and it was invaded for about 10 years. Uh, people trying to build houses there and stuff. Good thing they they left. Uh, as on factors, one thing that happens in Colombia was that the millions of a very large uh, middle class. Anywhere in the world today, you go and you find a Colombian. Why? Because the middle class got educated, had no jobs in Colombia, they migrated. So we in Colombia educated a lot of engineers that are all over the world. Even my daughter found a dentist in Paris, who was a Colombian from Cali, who knew some of my relatives. And she said, here in Paris, looking for a dentist, find a Colombian who knew you were great, whatever. And I'm like, well, <laughs> the world is round. Uh, there's a lot of corrupted, I mean, I mean, certain corruption is not the only country that has that. You know, you go around the world and you have to pay to cross the street. There's a lot of venality, a political class, that means stupid things doing doing stupid things. There's an attention to traffic to plan in the city but it's directed towards solving the traffic problem. It used to be a time where you could not buy a car because it was too expensive. Now Colombia makes cars and everyone wants a car. Well there's a place to park it. You the old city streets were only about thirty feet wide and you couldn't park the cars in the street. So now they are doing bypasses and bridges and all kinds of things, and they'll engineer. And then we do some open space, so you, you plant palm trees. They're like, oh, that's great, because they only require a little space, and you go up. Uh, the older generation has been retired or dying. The new generation has really a lot of ideas of planning and design, influenced by Spain, influenced by all exemplars. And there's a great influence of the growth of godfathers from the cartels and criminal elements. So it's a fun place to go. Uh, the environment around the city is the Andes. The Andes Mountains die in Colombia. They come as far. The Andes are the longest single mountain range in the world. And they come to, to the border with Ecuador and they split in two. And they go a little bit more. And before they get into the state where Cali is, they split into three. And between those things, there are all kinds of little houses and stuff. And they're very difficult to transact, so the Colombia is highly regionalized. If I go to Cali, uh, they know my accent is from Cali as opposed from Bogota or Medellin, those places. There are all these local areas that create this crazy culture. But there are nice mountains, little steep things. Uh, And Cali began to grow along the, the shores of the, um, the Cali River and began to climb into the mountains. Um, it's almost like a small uh, Sao Paulo where you have a city of pencils <laughs> sticking out there. And the thing with that is that every floor is one residence. You don't want to share your floor with anybody else. So you have very narrow buildings. One elevator controls, you control the, the opening at every floor but you don't want to have another tenant in your floor. So you buy the entire floor. It's a very South American thing. <laughs> so there are all these uh, things are all over the place. Uh, this is uh, early in the morning, so you are up in the mountains. Cali is about 1,000 uh, meters above sea level, which is about 3,000 feet, which is springtime. It's always 72 degrees, 65 in the evenings, 65. It's kind of nice. So I'm here on top of the mountain taking pictures of Cali in the fog. And it's just all over the valley. It's a big valley. It's a little sunny day. Very big on spores. Here you have the, uh, the bull ring, the, uh, the swim palace, and the velodrome. They built those for the Pan American Games in the 70s. Uh, yeah, condominiums are climbing, climbing all over the hills and, uh, and, and even they, they start without permit and then they figure out the permit and it's a very political process. It's taken me five years to sell five acres of my farm and I still don't have the check. 
so the city, here's the, here's the big Cauca River, and the city started over here, you know, and that's, that's the boundaries. These are all mountains, and here there's a road that goes all the way to the Pacific. The airport is on the other side. This, this is the rest of the valley, which is mostly agricultural. It's uh, one of the largest producers of sugar cane and soybeans. The historical center of the city, as I said before, is here. My house is about right there where the H is. But at these gateways, people have invaded land and taken over places. And after they take over the place, it becomes legal. So this is in the hills. So people that, through this, the garbage goes down here to this, here. Here, these are swampy areas. And people begin to fill and do channels and build these houses for the poor. So there's that. So in looking at this, I began to look at the city having this master system of rivers. The Calo River, Aguacatal, uh, Melendez, Lili, Pansy. And the, the bottom three rivers still are used for swimming, very preserved. The others are kind of polluted, you know, unless you go to the, to the headwaters. Uh, I don't mention this is a, so Luis Romero is a uh, urban scientist and looking at the development of cities in Latin America based on, on uh, certain prototypes. Uh, see, this presentation should take an hour in, in Oro Preto. I have to do it here in 20 minutes. Uh, the city grew this way. They, it began to grow uh, in the original place and began to expand. Uh, began to expand, and it has. Uh, technology is killing me. It began to expand, and. Uh, I mean, oh, well, <laughs> these guys want to be in the picture. Okay, that's it. Come on. There you go. Uh, and it has, it, has, uh, it has grown almost like a, like a spiral. This is the last areas to grow uh, from my grandparents' house about there to here takes an hour and a half by car. And it's not a long distance because of the traffic. And the streets, the grid of the central city began to get fractured and just things go bad. Uh, people have been very busy protesting the whole issue of destruction of forests. Uh, Cali has a lot of uh, this. This is an example of the, you know, that's the river and you build bridges and stuff to take care of traffic. Okay. So it's a typical case of, here's the river, they channel it. Uh, this is the, the right season. In the wet season, it gets almost to the top of the wall. That's uh, around December, thereabouts. And I saw in that when I was a kid. Today you will not touch it. We have uh, engineer pedestrian crossings, things of beauty that are there. Yeah. And they get upset if you say that's bad. Yeah. So they have this new system of transit imposed upon the city that is trying to collect. It's a surface transport thing. They want to. They rather have a, a subway anyway because it's more it's sexier to have a subway. They have these uh, double buses like that. So the city is is trying to figure out the traffic problem. So the question I ask is. Could these things be neighborhood centers? Could these things be neighborhood parks? Oh, that's a good idea. I never thought about that. So I'm doing a presentation eventually to go there once the government settles down a little bit. Uh, and I get some resources from the Cruz Foundation that is headed by Mrs. Cruz. Uh, they're trying to remove this kind of buses around. If you ride those buses for, between communities, it's a, it's a good adventure. Uh, there are more taxes in Cali per capita than anybody in Colombia. And so this is the central plaza. We're trying to, I'm trying to collect data and, and do a lot of things on, on my own kind of thing. It's one of the things that I get suckered into helping people. They are the, removing a lot of these things. So anyway, so my project now is to take this situation and trying to do a plan 
for rehabilitation of the city along ecological lines, meaning taking the rivers and trying to bring them back to health, and on that health-given environment, have the system of linear uh, parks that connect and restore the, the city that I knew, although I know, you know. Uh, so that's one of the things we're doing. Uh, I'm trying to connect to the new director of planning. The invasion of the public space is very serious, you know. So, and uh, see, try to walk through there. So it's one of those things that happens not just in Cali. You, you go to Sao Paulo, uh, any place around the world is packed with people selling and buying things. So, and they do, I, I, the way I do research is I collect uh, clippings from newspapers from Cali and Bogota about local conditions every day. So that's my, my database. Any questions, any answers? Sorry, this is, this is going very fast. Yes, ma'am. I'm looking at, there are seven rivers that come into the city and come from the, from the mountains. So the first thing I say is let's preserve the mountains as a natural park and then the river banks about 100 feet on either side to be, they have these linear corridors to let the river rest and recover. And then begin to do a series of, of efforts to remove people from uh, these invasions. You know, the, the Cauca River provides potable water to the city, it's one of the sources. Now it's biologically dead. So they had to collect the water and kind of bring it back to life and pump it to people because people have built houses right on top, of the, on top of the river, dumping into the river. And people use the river also to dump everything. Is that familiar to us? You know, we do here, we have the White River here. We dump everything on the rivers. And I would say, oh, I wish the river were the way, the way it was in, when I was a kid. I said, well, you can't. <laughs> so it takes a process of recovery. So I call it an ecological process. Uh, it's private land that uh, is was either squatted or just became by default owned by people. Uh, the development interest is very big because architectural engineering in Colombia is practiced as uh, builders. So it's no, you're not a consultant, you are a builder. So you get yourself some partners and you build a tower and you sell it. It's not, here we have the consulting approach to professional services. Over there you you build and sell. Any more questions about this thing? This is the plan, roughly. Come on, come on, come on. Well, I have it here, but it's not there. There you go. That was the idea to turn the city, uh, the forest protection zone, a color protection zone, and then they do a boundary of urban zone and, and work entirely in the urban zone, almost like a Oh, some cities are west. This is the growth bar there and not, be, not beyond here. You have to be careful those don't spill on the other side. Yeah. So it's an exotic place to go. They speak Spanish. And when I give the lecture in Brazil, I had to give the lesson in English and then answer questions in Portuguese. And it was great. And then we had a dinner afterwards. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, I was going to go back last year, but I couldn't go because the government had changed. I'm just wondering how it's received. How the, uh, the younger uh, people like it, and, <laughs> and they see me as a, a son of the city that left, and I was bringing back some wisdom. If I were younger, they would, they would, if I were younger, they would not pay attention to me. But being older and wiser or something like that, also on a cruise, San Morano, and they were... My father was in politics. So, you know, this is the Herman's son. He has something to say. And you're like, fine, listen to me. So it's kind of neat. But it's, it's kind of scary, too, because the manner of argument gets very violent. Because it's a popular assembly kind of thing. Everybody screams. Pretty much like the Democratic Convention. <laughs> but the Republican Convention. Okay, yeah.
concerned about rock and roll. Yeah. This is the idea that they want us to, you and I and, and Jim Anderson, to come over and do a charrette. Already? And I said, we get killed. <laughs> we get killed? Yeah. I don't know, no, no, we're going to kick that few. <laughs> <laughs> there are Americans coming here to mess us up. Thank you.